Today is November 10th, 2023. I'm David Berlin with Blockchain Journal. And today we are going to speak with Sophie Max Waldman, our customer journey analyst, to talk about another really cool customer loyalty and engagement program that's based on NFTs. One of the leading ones that's out there, the Starbucks Odyssey program. Sophie, thanks for joining me on the show today. It's a pleasure, always a pleasure, especially with this one. I think uh, you and I both, we, we talk all the time about the Starbucks program and so excited to kind of, you know, hop into it and chop it up. We do. Uh, we talk about the program. And as a matter of fact, it's really the first program that I really dove into to better understand exactly how it is that global brands like Starbucks can better engage their customers, their the fans of their brand to drive more loyalty, even more revenue, because as you know, in the Starbucks Odyssey program, they have some of these journeys you have to go on in order to earn an NFT. And as a part of those journeys, sometimes you have to part with your money. You have to go to the store or order something online and actually give them your money. And uh, that is one way that global brands can use NFTs to drive more revenue. They can incentivize their customers to make purchases and in exchange for those purchases, they earn their way towards some sort of NFT. So uh, let's go ahead and start and get into it. You, uh, I, I know from some of your posts on your Twitter and, or I should call it X, that uh, you are a, a coffee aficionado. You love your coffee and you spend a lot of time with the Starbucks brand. So when they launched the program, uh, what was it about the program that you thought was really cool? Yeah, that's a that's a good question to start it off. I'm a big coffee fan, as you said, mm -hmm. and I typically like to you know try to find a way to make coffee at home. However, the second that I saw a program like this, I instantly said, "Oh, now I have a reason to stop making coffee at home. I have a reason to <laughs> go to Starbucks and really you know learn about this experience that they're building and." see how, you know, they, they kind of have gone about this. I know just Starbucks as a brand itself has always tapped into like technology. They were one of the very first brands to even have mobile payments. They were one of the first places to offer free public Wi-Fi. Like they have a lot of kind of hidden like priority, I would say, in mm -hmm. having tech for it, for its brand. And, um, you know, with this, it only builds on that in that they already are launching a whole new loyalty program all on chain for its customers. Okay. All the different programs that we've experienced out there to drive more customer engagement, loyalty, fan engagement in the case of some uh, sports teams or car racing teams, they all take a little bit of a different approach. And Starbucks is definitely out there with a very different approach than a lot of other brands take. One of the things that I've noticed, for example, is when you buy an NFT from them, you buy it in US dollars. It's a, it's a they use Nifty Gateway, which uh, ma makes it possible for Starbucks to basically white label or put within their brand this idea of a custodial wallet in a way that customers don't even realize they're working with wallets or blockchain technology. So they're, they're paying in US dollars, not paying with cryptocurrency. They're looking at basically what looks like a website to them when they're actually looking at a wallet. And then what is it that they call their NFTs? They don't even call them NFTs. I'll, I'll let you pick it up from there and just talk us through what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, they've, they've covered all of the you know complexities to this technology. They really have made a priority in like hiding, I think, as much as those words as they possibly can. And so um, they call their NFTs itself stamps and they call mm -hmm. the kind of experience or process or challenge to get some of those NFTs a journey. Mm -hmm. And then they also have some of those NFTs, again, t t called stamps um, as purchased, like just one offs um, through different like campaigns and collections as well. Um, and that'll that'll kind of lead into as well, like the Odyssey program goes very hand in hand with kind of the calendar of Starbucks and the brand itself in that whatever we see the stores kind of following or however Starbucks comes out with new drinks or you know celebrating new seasons the Odyssey program has kind of reflected that through the entire experience as well 
and then incorporated that into the journeys and stamps. Oh, so that's really interesting. So what they're doing there, quite frankly, is that they've really kind of synced up the Odyssey program with everything else the brand does. And a lot of times we don't see that with the other NFT programs. Those NFT programs are kind of like outliers or sort of an experiment. They're not really in tune with the main brand is doing. But when you look at the Odyssey program, and I would agree with you, like, uh, for example, in October, when they kind of turned on all of their fall decorations in the store, that's at the same time that they offer these pumpkin spice latte NFTs in the Odyssey program, which was kind of cool. Uh, but why don't you take us through a journey, this idea of a journey, because a, a lot of other global brands and enterprises are going to want to know what that's about. Like, how do, what, what is a journey? How does it work? And what's the outcome when you get to the end of the journey? Yeah, the journeys are really fun. I think that the first two are still available for when people come into it. So some of them are short term timed, you know, relevant to whatever that season or activity might be. And then some mm -hmm. of them have been kind of kept open for new people because I, are they still under beta? Is it still is the entire Odyssey? Yeah, I think all of the programs are of under are beta, <laughs> you know, you know, like they're, they're limited access. You have to get off a waiting list. Starbucks so is pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So like as they come off that kind of waiting list, there are journeys that are available for some of those members to kind of take a stab at right away. And so uh, looking at one of the first two, I, I think the first one that I actually did was the um, Coffee Heritage. And mm -hmm. that one that one kind of just gave you a whole bunch of experience. I mean, when I, when I wrote about this, I pretty much said that the program itself was driving this engagement and infinity, like, uh, like loyalty to the brand. And I think that first kind of stems from this Coffee Heritage journey. So mm -hmm. how it kind of starts you in the Odyssey experience is with a metaverse based um, tour of Starbucks's coffee farm over in Costa Rica. And so you kind of like hop, it places you on a, you know, airplane, you land in Costa Rica, you get welcomed by a um, like guide that's there. And this is all in, of course, like a digital setting. And then you're able to kind of like walk around click on things. It's very interactive. So if you see like a piece of art on the wall or a tree, you can click on that and then learn a lot about the brand. And so I thought that that was very interesting because of course, when you walk into a Starbucks, you don't necessarily see all that goes on behind the scenes. And I think mm -hmm. that, you know, by stepping into this next kind of like iteration of the internet and the way that we are building brands and learning more about the products we consume, Starbucks is Odyssey program specifically really tapped into educating and kind of like building this brand awareness for their customers to, you know, not only, of course, keep keep enjoying their coffee and spending time in the coffee shops, but also learning that, you know, there's so much more to this. And so through that metaverse experience, we really got like a whole bunch of information on what the brand is, how the coffee is produced and kind of like all that goes on behind the scenes. And then going through that, there were a couple more um, steps to like the completing the journey to get that final stamp. And so some mm -hmm. of those are like little trivia questions as to, you know, where, where are the beans produced or how, what step comes first or, you know, how do we plant this, this, you know, seed to eventually become a coffee cup for you. And it, and it kind of like educates you along the way and it makes it a little bit fun with, I wouldn't say quizzes, but like uh, trivia type questions that test, test your knowledge to an extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, in some ways, and I think this is a possible business outcome that Starbucks is shooting for. We have to basically reverse engineer what the business outcomes it is that they're looking yeah. for. But when I think about that, what they're doing is they're, tr they're not only educating you and making you more aware of what the brand is and what it stands for, but they're kind of turning you into an ambassador for the brand and they're not even paying you to do that. You're more likely, I know I'm more likely to go out there and share what I've learned about that coffee farm in Costa Rica now that I know a little bit about it. And now that they even forced me to take a quiz to prove that I consumed all the content, went through the journey and everything like that makes me more knowledgeable about the brand. And, and that is the sort of intimacy that a lot of global brands should be looking to drive 
uh, with their customers and maybe with even uh, people who are not already customers. You know, maybe, maybe this is a way to invite them in, have fun with new people and turn them into customers. Yeah, and that's actually what the doing good um, journey really kind of like prompted for me because that one was all about kind of being like sustainable and environmentally friendly, seeing what you can do to kind of help this, the the globe itself. And so with Mm -hmm. that, I thought that that was very inviting for, you know, people to kind of like put themselves out there in that, I yes, I'm doing this for, for instance, a stamp or to complete the journey, but also because I wouldn't typically do this. And there is a little bit of that incentive that Starbucks is giving customers through the Odyssey program. And so what that looked like was, of course, like, you know, learning about some like sustainability. There, I think there was like a short little video and some more trivia. There was a mini game where you were kind of like looking around, searching for things and clicking on those um, to get the points. And then what really struck me like as a kind of surprise, but a very exciting challenge was the bring your own cup activity. And that's, of course, to save, you know, cups and reuse and reduce all of your consumption across just like the um, traditional brands that you you would just walk in there and accept the, you know, paper coffee cup. But this really prompted me to make a conscious effort to bring my own cup and kind of experience that. And for from doing that, I actually learned that there's a discount on all of your drink orders when you do bring your own cup. And then in doing that, I also um, had the experience to try some of their dairy-free drinks, which was part of this as well. I think you had to try like right. one or two, maybe, maybe even three it was. Um, and in, in that, you know, you're trying new things, you're trying new flavors, new, new drinks on the menu that you might not typically go to. And then, of course, you get a little bit of that discount on it as well from bringing your own cup. And so, again, like typically I wouldn't normally think to do any of this. I didn't even know that there was a discount for bringing that cup. And now that I've gone through this journey. I now know that this is a priority for Starbucks and how, you know, they go about their sustainable practices is is really interesting. Yeah, I I would agree that when I went through that same journey and learned more about everything they're doing to promote sustainability, saving the environment, reusability, it made me a bigger fan of Starbucks yeah. than I already was. And it that sort of creates that loyalty. You know, we talk about customer engagement and loyalty, but what they're doing there is, is they're basically making it so that like when I do have a choice, if I'm walking around like let's say San Francisco or New York City and there's a coffee store in every block, I'll make that extra effort to walk into the Starbucks to get my coffee just because I become a bigger fan of the brand. Their corporate values are aligned with my personal values. That's a great thing. And so therefore I become more loyal to the brand. That is something else that a lot of other enterprises and global brands should be thinking about, I think, when they go to launch their own NFT programs or when they're just looking at blockchain technology and saying, what can this technology do for me? Yeah, definitely. It it totally opens that up and it just it there's so many ways that they can go about this. And I actually value that Starbucks is trying so many different of those avenues mm-hmm. because it can be really complex for a newcomer to kind of understand how there's all of these different like mechanics on the back end of the blockchain and on the back end of these stamps that they don't even see or know about, but yet they still get to experience in a really fun and novel way that doesn't seem super complex to them. They can just, you know, use this simple web app and have a full experience without even knowing. Um, And so it really just kind of instills like that. Let's collect, let's earn rewards, let's build loyalty and educate you on the brand. And little do they know all that's going on on the back end with that. And then Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, it's it's just building on this experience for the customers. I'm thinking of the uh, going places journey where you had to go to multiple different stores you had to go into a store and um, I think you had to like scan some one of the uh, coffee bean bags and everyone in the store was like looking at me. What are you doing or what are you checking for? Is there something <laughs> I can help you with? And I was explaining that I was doing the pretty much task that the, that the brand had set up for, for me to do and everyone else participating in the journey. Um, however, no one, no one else knew that this was an opportunity. And so then in that moment with the going places journey, I was also able to kind of onboard some people within the store and educate them that this is what I was doing. This is what Starbucks is doing and how they can really, you know, tap into it as well. 
Yeah, uh, that, that that's a really interesting point because I did the same thing. I went into the different stores. Uh, a lot of the Starbucks employees were not aware of the Odyssey program. I, I definitely noticed that. And uh, the same thing happened to me, by the way, with the uh, Adidas Alts program. I was I was in their confirmed app uh, trying to get a free NFT uh, that was associated with their Montclair drop, mm -hmm. and I couldn't get it to work. And uh, w there was actually a chat at, uh, capability in the app to chat with technical support, and, and their technical support people didn't know uh, about the possibility of getting an NFT and connecting the confirmed app to a cryptocurrency wallet. So they were confused. And so that kind of speaks a little bit to some of the things that these brands could do a little bit better, which is let everybody who works for them and supports them know that this is going on and that they might get asked questions or encounter customers who are actually working with the NFT program as opposed to just being your ordinary everyday customer. I also think that um, the, some of the points you're raising here are important because we haven't really talked about them with the other programs is this, this kind of metaverse thing that's going on. And we hear a lot about metaverses with blockchain and NFTs, but this is also something that's interesting about the Starbucks program is they are in fact exper experimenting with the idea of creating a metaverse where we roam around and we, you know, to complete our journeys, we go and we sort of take a tour of the uh, farm in Costa Rica, or we go into a store and we're doing this augmented reality thing where we're using the Starbucks app to scan or, or the website that they've set up to scan the QR codes on the products in the store. That That is uh, a little more experiential and immersive than some of the other programs that we've worked with. Yeah, definitely. They've even tapped into a lot of um, AR stuff. I know with the one, one of the one of the uh, journeys where you had to choose your avatar. I can't think of the name of it right now, but the the one where you chose your avatar it was like a whole bunch of different uh, kind of like animals. And then you went into the store and you scanned <laughs> the Starbucks logo. It kind of brought that animal to AR life. And I think like one of them was. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember. There was like a tiger. It's all of those different animals. Tiger, kind of... uh, yeah, a hummingbird, a bear. Yeah, yep. Yeah, and so you you kind of brought that character to life and got to see it in AR as well as all of these metaverse experiences. Um, and and they did tap into the metaverse as well with not only that first journey where you went to the Costa Rica farm and got to kind of experience that. They uh, did a second one, which was a little bit more what I would say like gamified than the original one. And that was all around the uh, pumpkin spice latte experience. So they were celebrating right. the the pumpkin spice, I guess, like birthday in the metaverse um, in October. And that was that metaverse experience was token gated to any member who had at least one stamp. And I know we've to we we spoke about token gating before. Um, and I think, again, that's something that was very much like behind the scenes. But if you were someone who had seen somebody post that they were celebrating pumpkin spice lattes with Starbucks in the metaverse and playing this game where they were collecting like cinnamon and cups and pumpkins, <laughs> right. you would say, oh, I want I want to play that game. or I want to see what this is about. And when you got to that point, you would have seen that you weren't eligible because you didn't have a stamp or you weren't a part of the program. And so it kind of prompted a little bit of that. Like, what is this cool game that Starbucks, you know, enthusiasts are playing? How can I become involved? And then that in that moment, they would have noticed, you know, oh, this is why I need to be a part of this or this is why I need in so right. I can have that token gated access. Well, this gets back to that idea that we talk about, which is this FOMO or fear of missing out. Uh, you see other people doing this and wonder what all the excitement is about. You see them posting things like their pumpkin spice latte stamps uh, or images of those stamps on on Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever, whatever social network they're on, Instagram. And then you're like, what's that about? And then you find out, oh, wait a minute, I need to be a holder of yeah. some other NFT in order to get into this other experience. And that's what token gating is. And we do see a lot of the different brands that we're working with and looking at uh, at Blockchain Journal doing and experimenting with token gating. Let's talk about this idea of points because Starbucks has their regular customer loyalty program, which involves stars, you know, and, but they use, they have this idea of points and you can earn, there are different point levels and stuff like that. Uh, so 
as you go through and you get these NFTs, earn these stamps, actually, we'll call them stamps because that's what our, our, the Odyssey program calls them. What, what's this whole point system about? Yes. Yeah, so they have a point system for all of their rewards. And then they call these kind of like reward periods, the benefit selection period. And mm -hmm. so when the benefit selection period comes around, depending on how many points you currently have in your kind of like, you know, account, ledger, wallet, however you want to look at it, um, you're able to choose one of those benefits within those levels. And so the levels are broken down into, I think it's like 1,000 to 2,000 points for the first level. Maybe it's like 3,000 to 6,000 for the second level. And then, you know, it goes on from there. Mm -hmm. And so depending on where you fall within those brackets, you're able to then redeem whatever that set, you know, reward is for that time. And we've seen some of them already because there has been a couple of those, you know, benefit selection periods already. And then we also have seen like that there's more to come that we might, you know, be, have some like speculation or excitement around. And so I'd say like from the from the start, some of those options um, right off the bat were like a virtual coffee class. You could do a like live tasting with one of the Starbucks employees. I know they were doing something else at the uh, reserves, which is like the more, you know, flagship stores that Starbucks has mm -hmm. in select cities. And so um, like with all of those, you got an actual experience. And then there also have been, in your case, like getting a, um, you know, hat, a shirt, a piece of merchandise. I know they did with the um, one collection. Everyone was able to get a personalized coffee cup with this matching, you know, NFT right. that they had purchased or received in that. And so not only, you know, did you receive a new cup, but it had a little bit of kind of that like customization, personalization to you because it was not only the cup, but it was the, you know, specific asset that you had digitally as well. That's right. That, that was the Siren collection. And that was the first paid collection they did, I believe. Yes. And they sold the NFTs for $100 each. They sold 2,000 of them. So they generated yes. uh, $200,000 worth of revenue for Starbucks, probably the most money they made in any single period of time. It sold out immediately. Uh, I was not... I was not in the, a part of the program when that came along, but yeah, you, you're right. What what they did was since there was everybody got a different NFT, a different visage of of the uh, siren, which is what they. That's another thing I learned, by the way. You know, yeah. is that the mermaid and the logo is actually not a well, it is a mermaid, but it's a, it's a more glorified version of a mermaid called a siren. So you, that's another thing I learned about the brand, and I started telling other people, hey, that's not a mermaid, that's a siren actually, and here's what a siren is. But I think what's interesting about the points program is that, you know, as you mentioned, there's these different levels, but it's not like you turn the points in like a frequent flyer program, you know, an airline program or something like that. It's yeah. just like whatever point level you're at, then you get to sit, you get to claim some benefit. And uh, the other thing that is interesting is, is that you will lose your points if you decide to sell your NFTs, your stamps. Like, like, so if you sell one of the premium NFTs, they have different NFTs, ones that you earn for journeys and ones that you buy. If you turn around and sell those on the open market and they do have a marketplace where you can sell them to other brand fans or brand aficionados and customers, uh, then they take those points away from you and they add those points to that other person's account. So I, I think that's a really interesting way of running the program. So they have these points, but they also have the NFTs. There's a lot going on there uh, that it actually took me a little while to figure out, oh, how does this program work? And you know, from a customer point of view, it's a little more complicated than I would say some other programs are. So um, let's, uh, what, what I wanted to do is now that we're talking about the benefits is my benefit level is like over 10,000 points. And, uh, and so when they had the last period of, of um, uh, benefit selection, I was able to pick and choose from a variety of benefits because I was over 10,000 points. And uh, I opted to, um, to get this. And so uh, as you can see, um, the, uh, uh, I'm going to kind of pull this up here. Uh, it's like an envelope that came to me from Starbucks. It's got the Odyssey logo on it, which is kind of cool. And I have yet to open this. So I thought maybe now what we could do is I could uh, open it um, right on camera and we could sort of unbox this to see what it exactly is. So I'm going to tear it open here. 
unboxing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's not nothing like your Tina J unboxing when you unbox the. Uh, this is not a JPEG sneakers from Nike, but um, oops, something's sliding out here. So uh, here's a little, um, here's a little card in it uh, with a QR code on it that says I got to scan that for some adventure. So I'm going to have to definitely scan that and see what that's about. Uh, that's another thing that they do with these different programs is they um, send you to something else. And let's see what we've got here. So I'm going to slide this out. Aha. And remember, you were talking about the animals. And one of those animals is the tiger. So I got a tiger poster, a little tiny tiger poster. So... Uh, now I've got something to adorn my walls with like you have uh, at your place because I always notice yes. that you have all kinds of stuff behind you that are associated uh, – that's associated with the programs you're working with. But that's that's the tiger. Uh, just going back to what we were talking about earlier, they did uh, offer a collection of NFTs that involved tigers, bears, hummingbirds, and um, I believe I did pick the tiger as the benefit that I wanted to get, this little poster. I'm not – my, sure, my you know, it's the tiger as well. So I, I oh, okay. This. Well, there, there you go. And there's nothing else left in the in the, on the envelope. So there you go. Uh, a little unboxing uh, of one of those benefits that I was uh, that I ascended to as a result of uh, achieving and holding more than ten thousand points. So um, I'm loving that. I wish I was in the higher tier at the time. I think I don't even think I was above 10,000 points at that time. So, but there was a higher tier where you could have gotten some even cooler benefits. I just wasn't in that tier. So I opted for this, this little poster, but uh, so overall, you know, we talk about how you're the customer journey analyst. Um, are you just a much bigger fan of the, the Starbucks brand than you ever were before because of this program? Is it, 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 is Starbucks achieving what I think we think uh, Starbucks is looking to achieve? I honestly would say yes. And I definitely would not say that about all of these, you know, NFT or on-chain experiences that brands are trying to, you know, explore right now. I think mm -hmm. that especially for, for me, so like being in New York City, there's a coffee shop, any, any corner that, you know, I potentially turn. And so for this, like a specific experience with Starbucks, it 100% motivates me more so to, you know, invest in their brand, support their brand, stay up to date with what they're doing. I mean, we, we talk about this all the time as well. It is kind of challenging to stay up to date with what they're doing because oh, yeah. there is so much. But at the same time, if you look at some other, you know, brands that are in this space, they, they came out with a collection or they came out with something and they've kind of just gone a little silent since or they don't have experiences throughout the entire year or they don't tap into the holiday seasons and they're not, you know, making things that are kind of like relevant to today every day. And so I do think that Starbucks has really prioritized that. And given that the whole experience is pretty like gamified in those journeys, you have to, you know, wait X amount of days before they unlock or before, you know, the next step is available. And so mm -hmm. it does kind of keep me on my toes. It keeps me checking the discord, checking, you know, to see what's going on. And then they also do so many different experiences that like on a, you know, Tuesday at 5 p.m., they'll have a, you know, live chat with someone in the discord. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm tuning into that just because I all of a sudden care about, you know, whatever yeah. this collection is or artist is or, you know, journey that they have going on. And otherwise, I, I would have never done anything, you know, live or tuned into anything that Starbucks was doing. And now it really does give me a reason to, you know, dive into that and, and be there for all those experiences. I do think a lot of these programs are trying to figure out where the balance is. Yeah. There is, as you pointed out, those pro there are those programs that have um, like they issue a collection and then they go completely silent. Like, like yeah. now what? Uh, and then on the other end, there's. The, there are these programs that are literally making announcements every day on their Discord channel. And it's just, it's so verbose, it's impossible to keep up with. And if you do, it sort of keeps you from even tuning into some of the other programs yeah. where the same sort of thing is going on. Starbucks is definitely one of the busier programs. As you pointed out, they have their Discord server with a whole bunch of channels in it. And there's a lot going on there. They make all their announcements there. There's stuff going on there every single day. It's a lot to tune into. 
Uh, but it is the way they do keep all of the program participants updated on exactly like what's coming up in the way of a drop or a new benefit selection period. And so you do have to kind of pay close attention, but I think they're doing a pretty good job. We know of other programs, for example, uh, I believe the Williams F1 racing program, they don't even have a Discord server. So it's like they try to keep in touch with you over email instead of that. And so there are different ways, but it is about striking a balance. Um, I think before we just sign off here, one of the challenges that I'm finding is, is that Starbucks is using its Discord server. It is also using email to stay in touch mm -hmm. with Odyssey participants. And so now, like every time something happens in the Odyssey program that's about driving loyalty, I get an email. But I'm also a member of the rewards program, which, by the way, the Starbucks rewards yeah. program, that's their general loyalty program, which is a prerequisite to joining the Odyssey program. You have to be a member of rewards to get on the waiting list for the Odyssey program. And now I'm getting emails from both programs. And I'm like, OK, that's enough, guys. Like, like, like I'm getting overwhelmed here. My inbox, you know, like, 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 you know, I don't want to hear about the number of stars I can get if I buy this cup of coffee at the same time about the NFT that I can get if I can go and buy two non-dairy drinks or something like that. Totally. Yeah, there is a yeah. little bit of conflict there. And I'm I'm in both as well as we all are. Um, And so I definitely see, you know, when the emails come through. The one thing that I do like about receiving the Odyssey, you know, emails specifically is that a lot of the, you know, brands that either only choose Discord or email, it it limits them from some of that like community chatter. And so through having the Discord, I actually praise them because it is well like well ran and well yeah. there, there's engagement in there all day long. And so I see that email. I view the email as kind of like a, you know, bigger announcement, like heads up. And then if I, you know, choose to want to learn more or choose to engage with it or want to connect with others about this experience, I know every time I can run to the Discord and people are already discussing that email that everyone just received. And so it gives you, yeah. it gives you a little bit of, you know, connectivity that it wasn't just an email, even though it was, but now you can kind of take that and go, you know, talk with your friends or talk with the community on, you know, when are you going to start or what's your thoughts on this and, and they really have an active community in that every time. That is a fair point. I, I definitely agree with that point. And uh, I think also the other important thing about these Discord servers, these communities that they're running, is they're also trying to drive engagement across the community, not necessarily engagement between the brand and the customers, but they're trying to get the customers yeah. to create their own little conversation. And I would say that the, the Discord a server for the Starbucks Odyssey program is a really good example of where you see a lot of that taking place. Yeah, I think of the uh, the cafe that they have within mm. the Discord. And that's something that I think is super cool to kind of keep people going to the Discord every day because some days I'll go, you know, five days without going into the Discord. And I remember, oh, there's the cafe. Like I should go get a point for that. And it motivates me to go back in and then I read other things and I'm talking to other people. Um, but the cafe, for anybody who's like unaware, you pretty much can gift a, you know, or artificial kind of Starbucks, uh, either drink, food, beverage, hot, cold. You choose what it is. So you can do like breakfast item. You can do hot beverage. You can do cold. And um, you gift it to another member within the channel. And then you are given a bean for that. And so are they. And so with that a bean with that, the beans can then be redeemed as well for a whole nother kind of um, experience where they're doing, I think the, the beans go into a monthly raffle. Um, mm -hmm. And then with that raffle, it's either monthly or weekly. Um, with that raffle, you can get a actual, you know, gift card or free drink to the store. And so, and by spending some time in the discord every day, quickly sending someone else like that's, that's rewarding you for, you know, uplifting another community member. Yeah. And, and I think that that's brilliant. It, you know, keeps people in there and then it gives you a reason and, and like um, incentive to talk that ties to the physical world as well in that, you know, your beans eventually can get you a raffle spot to win that, uh, you know, benefit. So wait a minute. I, I think what I'm learning here is that you're giving out some virtual drinks to get some of these beans, but you've never given one to me. So uh, I don't know where I you know, rank in your scheme of things. But hey, listen, uh, Sophie, thank you so much for joining us, talking us through the Starbucks Odyssey program. 
uh, how it makes you feel as a customer, how it's resonating with you and uh, digging into some of the components of it so that other global brands and enterprises can better understand what it is a Starbucks Odyssey is doing and how maybe they can reproduce some of those elements for their own customers, their own fans. So thanks very much for joining us here on the Blockchain Journal podcast. Of course. Thank you for having me. We've been speaking with Sophie Max Waldman. She's a customer journey analyst at Blockchain Journal. She's the one who digs into all the different NFT programs that are out there to drive customer loyalty and engagement. And she really puts her hands on and learns about how those programs work so that she can relay to you here on our podcast just exactly uh, how those programs work and how other enterprises and global brands can learn from those experiences. And if you want to find out more about the other NFT programs, just come to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash blockchain journal, or you can come to blockchainjournal.com and we have all of this content posted there as well. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you on the next podcast.